But now, if I want to find out a minimum, Rather than deal with this, by the way, those of you who have made some headway into this will find there's no problem with doing this, okay? Uh, it just is much longer and more error prone. There's no reason why I can't, for part B, just deal with this guy. The maximum, sorry, the minimum for this will be the same as the minimum for this, okay? So therefore, my first step is differentiate, what am I differentiating? A, B squared. That's the function. Right? I know it looks a little bit awkward, but I can call functions whatever I like. I call them y or f or p or a, b squared. It's just a name for me. Right? They're both going to be functions in t, so I can differentiate them with respect to t, with respect to time. Okay? So that's just this part under here. It looks to me like it'd be minus 112 plus 64t. Yes? Okay. Now I want to find, what do I want to find? What was the point of doing that? I want, I want turning zero. points, right? Turning points are what I'm after, okay? So I will say turning points may exist because I don't actually know yet. I'm just solving for the derivative of being zero. May exist when that's zero. Okay? So this is really easy. It's just a straight line. Why don't you do the square on Okay, now, why aren't I doing another squared here? And the reason why is how many times have I differentiated? Once. Answer, once. First derivative, right? Now, don't be confused. It's a squared up here, but that's because that's what the function is. I could just as easily have said, you know what, forget that this is a or b or squared or anything. Just call that, just call it x. Just call it anything you like. It's just a function, right? And it happens to do what I want it to. The behavior it exhibits is exactly the behavior I'm trying to test. But it is actually called AB squared, so I have no reason to give a new label to it. What's the least distance apart? Would it be zero? Okay, so let's think about this. I, will, I, I did kind of mention this before, but I will just show you quickly on the diagram, right? Uh, because my diagram is so wonderfully awesome, okay? Let's just track this through time. After one hour, right, I would be here and here. They've both gotten four kilometers closer. Is that okay? Now at the second hour, A, the guy at A, will have reached O, right? But the guy at B will have gone past O, right? So the distance was that for the first hour, then it's this for the second hour. Do you see that? So they never actually collide because they start at different points and travel at the same speed. Okay. Um, there's always going to be some different combinations. So for instance, they could start the same distance away, but one could be traveling faster than the other, so they're never actually going to collide. Okay. All right, so this is a nice, easy linear function to solve. There it is, right there. So I'm going for minus 112t, sorry, minus 112 <laughs> plus 64t. It's zero. Someone already worked out the answer? 1.77. 1 po um, seven, on seven on four? Yeah. Seven on four. Yeah. Which is 1.75. Okay. One and three quarter hours. Now, by the way, just as usual, you can use a sense check on this, right? Does that sound about right? I just very slowly rehearsed for you, okay? At one hour, they're here. And then at two hours, they're here. 1.75 hours is somewhere in between. That does sound about right. It's sort of around the time where he's getting closest to here. He'll get there at two hours. Uh, whereas this guy has just gone past. He's just yeah. gone past. He takes one and a half hours to get there. One kilometer north and is one kilometer north. Okay, so, west, west. very good. So you've gone a step further because I'm, I'm not quite there, right? Hence find when, when, there's my answer to when after one and three quarters hours, uh, an hour and 45 minutes, and where the men are nearest to each other. So I'm going right. to take this, and where do I put it? Where do I put this time? Okay, now, interestingly, right, usually we're so used to just, oh, just put this back into the function that you differentiated, mm -hmm. which is this function. But the question is not asking that. It doesn't say how far are the men from each other at that point. You see how important it is to read the question? It's a simple thing, right? I actually want to know where they are. That's these numbers, okay? So when I've got 7 over 4 here, because it's all over 4, this is really easy, this will be 8 minus 7 which is one, right? And this one will be six take away seven. Now that's negative one, which means he's over here, he's gone past, right? Because my distance here is east, so he will have been, he'll be on the west side now, okay? So I guess my answer would be, therefore, after one and three quarters hours, sorry, my, my tabling is a bit of a disaster. That's my time, right? A will be, 
And you've got to put it all in terms of like, they've, they've given you um, bearings, right? North and east and so on. So I'm going to say A will be, actually is that the name of the guy? Or is that the name of the point? Uh, two men. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one guy, <laughs> you know. Um, um, uh, after that time, one man will be, one man will be um, one kilometer north. Of O, and the other will be, what did we say? He's gone past, right? The other will be one kilometer west. Of O, because he's gone past. So there will be the square root of two kilometers away from each other. Done. So just to tie this up, there are a few things that we noticed. A couple of twists and turns, right? Number one, the way you phrase your question is everything, right? Um, if you phrase your question poorly, you can't really progress. You can't access the question until you know what's what, right? Now that you've seen this kind of question before, you will never have this trouble with this particular kind, right? But later on, um, you'll be like, Wait, how do I even start this question? That's often the trickiest part. Read very carefully. Don't, don't wall yourself into the first time you construct the question, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with drawing this diagram. You just realize as soon as you've drawn it, okay, well, this is not enough. I need to progress on to something else. And sometimes the something else doesn't arrive in your head until you've read, read to the end of the question, and that's fine. <laughs> Secondly, be aware of what you're differentiating and why. Okay? Take advantage of things like this. I probably would have said up here, minimizing the distance is the same as minimizing the square of the distance. Therefore, I'm just going to work with the square of the distance and not worry about something to the power of a half and chain rule and gross. Okay? And then from there, just be careful with your interpretation. Like, Go back to the question. What are they actually asking for? Don't just blindly take your number, <laughs> pop it back in whatever function you started with. Yep. Pay attention to whether that's actually what they're interested in and whether, whether that answers the question or not. Okay? Any questions? Any questions on that one before we move on? Yeah? Jack. Shh. Year 12. I want to hear this question, so I'll ask for your courtesy. Go you ahead, Jack. Can square out like a larger piece of cardboard? You know, this one's values of cardboard. So it doesn't say for questions like these. So yes. Very good. Yeah, okay. That's a great question. Um, here, there is no... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no domain restriction on time, apart from the fact that we assume time is positive. Like, you know, there's no, there's no point in figuring about negative time anyway uh, because they're just getting further away from each other. So what's the point? You're not going to find a stationary point over there. But you're exactly right. It's like, well, time can be anything, right? However, that's one of the helpful things about thinking about this guy, right? This guy here, this function, you have a look at what kind of function it is, right? You're going to be, this is going to be a quadratic, right? Or at least the distance squared will be a quadratic. So at some point, Right? You hit a minimum, okay? Uh, sorry, it should actually be above the axis because it's positive distance. You hit a minimum, <laughs> but then you're never ever coming back. So even if there's no endpoint, the behavior being exhibited here is trivial, right? It's like I'm never going to get a minimum no matter how far I go, right? So that's actually an advantage to you because there's no endpoint to test. You don't have to worry about an endpoint. Um, at this point, I actually would have finished. I should have said, uh, even though they haven't asked for it, um, I would have determined the nature of this. Look, this is super easy to differentiate again. So you find, okay, there's the second derivative, 64. 64 is positive, which means it's concave up, which means it's a minimum. So I have justified fairly confidently that I have a minimum at that point. Okay, uh, But yeah, you, you don't get... Often with these time questions, right, um, there isn't anything apart from, I guess I would say, positive time, okay? Um, sometimes you look carefully, uh, all of these questions are actually of a very similar, like the crossroad question is very, very common, and there are lots of different variations on it. Uh, there are other ones like this. Uh, here's, a, here's a classic one. I'm not sure if any of you guys have seen it before. The classic one is like this. You've got a, um, a guy and he's... Um, He's in a kayak or a raft or something like that oh, out at no. sea, okay? Um, so he's here. Oh. So I'll make it a yacht because I can draw yachts, okay? Here you go. He's out in a yacht, right? And he has to get to some point on the beach, right? Now he has, whoa, there we go. He has two choices. He doesn't have two choices. He's got a lot of choices. He can go straight to shore and then he can walk across. He could do that, right? 
Or alternatively, Ooh. he could sail straight there, or he could do some combination. For example, he could oh. sail to some point here, and then he could walk. Now the question would be, this again would be a minimum, right? It's not as hard as it looks. In fact, it's just a variation on this question. It's still Pythagoras. Can you see there's still, there's still Pythagoras involved? Okay. And then you say, well, based on the speeds that he can sail at versus the speed he can walk at, then you can work out where the minimum or maximum is. Now, in this case, look carefully, look carefully. Um, what would be the variable? What's he, what's he changing? What can he, you know, there's lots of different ways to say this, but what might you say is one example of the parameter? Yeah, Mark. Okay, where's he, where's he gonna go onto shore, right? So for instance, if, um, you know, let's put some numbers on this, okay? So suppose he's four, that was a terrible choice of color, sorry. Uh, let's suppose he's four kilometers um, perpendicular from the beach, and that point there is maybe, I don't know, five kilometers away from the point he actually needs to get to, okay? Now, what am I varying? It's where do I land? Where do I land on the beach? Okay, so I could land here, or I could land here, or here, or here, or anywhere along in this space, okay? So you need to introduce a parameter. You could do this a variety of ways, right? Um, I mean, the first way that comes off the top of my mind because of the way I phrased the question is I might say, let's call this point here, let's call it zero. Right? He lands here, zero is the actual variable. And then you can work out how much time that takes. Okay? But he can land at any point from zero up until one or two or three or four or five. Right? That's the maximum of the parameter. Okay? Now, you can differentiate, you may find a stationary point, but then look, there are very well-defined endpoints for this domain. Right? And you need to test them because they might be the minimum as well. Depends on what kind of stationary point you find. Okay.